Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today is a good day because today I finally get to talk about WebAssembly. As a part-time web developer, WebAssembly is probably the technology that excites me the most because I am very excited by the little things, but also because WebAssembly is very cool and potentially very revolutionary. In case you haven't heard of it until now, first off, thanks for coming to me as your first introduction to it, but WebAssembly is essentially the ability to run native speed bytecode inside browsers. So the way it's most commonly thought of is you take a simple C program and you can compile it into a bytecode written for the WASM virtual machine. WASM standing for WebAssembly State Machine. And this WASM virtual machine is very small, it's very portable, and it's now implemented across all the major browsers. Which means instead of using JavaScript for everything front end, for a lot of very heavily looped programs, you can now compile C programs and get loops running at like native speed. And this is good for a lot of different applications, which is why it excites me so much. I have literally been geeking out about WebAssembly for the past two years. So when I graduated high school and I was doing nothing over the summer, essentially, except for research, I wanted a small little side project. So I thought, why don't I create this cool little website that allows you to custom filter images with like color filters and stuff like that. And so the way I was designing it was the program would go through and change pixel data and the images like RGB values and stuff like that. And I had just heard of WebAssembly at the time. So that's what I wanted to use to loop through every pixel in the picture and change the values. Granted, I didn't actually know that well how to get it to work at the time. So I ended up just doing it in JavaScript and the performance didn't suffer but I just sort of lost focus on the project, so I just abandoned it. But come to think of it, I might do a video on that someday. Who really knows? Now, back to WebAssembly, it is finally matured enough. Two years ago, it wasn't implemented on every major browser, but now it is. So this is definitely a big step forward for the WebAssembly community and for web developers everywhere. So the Wasm state machine isn't just for browsers it is actually platform agnostic to an extent in its design. So you can't like select HTML tags or whatever in C. That's not what this thing does. It's designed to be just a general use, general purpose, very small, portable state machine, which means that instead of being essentially only for the browser, you could also embed the Wasm state machine theoretically in any embedded device you want to. So that makes it even more potent beyond just web development, which somehow makes it even cooler. Now, I have only mentioned compiling C into WebAssembly because that's what I've done the most, but there's actually a list of languages that now have a viable WebAssembly target. So, you know, you can compile C, C++, Rust. I think they're working on OCaml. And then there's languages that are interpreted that they've just compiled their interpreters into Wasm bytecode. So now you can run Java, Lua, Ruby, Python, front end on the browser. Now, if that doesn't interest you, I don't know what will. If it does interest you, just stick around for the next five minutes and I will go ahead and show you how to compile C into WebAssembly and then run it in the browser. We should be about halfway through the video now, so it's probably a good time to mention, if you are not yet subscribed, please click that subscribe button if you would like to see more intro to like cool technologies or just weird projects that I do, all sorts of stuff like that. I don't plan on slowing down on this channel anytime soon. I am going to switch over to the computer view and then we can start programming in WebAssembly. Okay, so here I have the very simple outline of a website, or little index.html, and I also have a thing.c. It's only 11 lines here with like two spaces, so I guess really it's like nine lines. And this is just to show you how to compile and then interface simple C code into WebAssembly. And I will be using the mscripten emcc compiler, so that's how I'm going to be compiling my C code. There are other compilers for other languages like Rust, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but I probably will cover some like special or Wasm topics later on in the channel. Okay, so a quick rundown of the C code. All I want to do 
when I start it up is I'm just going to print hello world. You know, it's basically a hello world program. So I, I include standard IO and it's important that for some WebAssembly modules, because they're called modules, you're going to want to include mscript in right here. This is the C compiler, like the basic standard C compiler for WebAssembly. It's called EMCC or mscript in C compiler. Now, there's two ways to call this C code in WebAssembly in the browser. So the first way is if you define this main function right here, it's going to run when you instantiate the module in the browser. So when I include all this code into the browser, you're going to see hello world in the console. The other way is you can create bindings to functions like this message. That's what this keep alive decorator here is for. And then you can call that through JavaScript bindings whenever you want in the browser. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot more you can do in WebAssembly that I'm just now starting to get into. I have a whole lot of other projects to work on. So I'm just going to show you these two basic things because I also don't want to overpack this video. OK, so we have our C code. We have our HTML. How exactly are we going to do this? OK, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and compile our thing.c. But first, let me just get into my project directory here. All right, emcc thing.c. Go ahead and look what you got. Now you've got an a.out.js and an a.out.wasm. So this JS actually automatically will load up your WebAssembly module. So we just have to include this essentially and everything will go fine. So let's go back to index.html. OK, and so now that we've included the JS library into our HTML file, we can go ahead and actually take a look at it in the browser. Here we've got our HTML file open inside Firefox. So I'm just going to go ahead and inspect. Look at the console and we have hello world. So just like what I said, if you put it into this main function here, if you just load up the WebAssembly module, it's going to do this stuff in main, which is pretty cool. Now, that's all good and fine. But let's say you want some functionality in C and you want to be able to call it at some arbitrary point in your JavaScript code. So usually what we would do is use the module functions inside WebAssembly in the JavaScript browser. But the thing is, we have this function called message and we want to call it. But there's a few compiler flags we got to set in EMCC before we can actually use and arbitrarily call these C functions. So we're going to go ahead and recompile this. So we're going to compile thing.c and dash s. And we're going to say extra exported runtime methods and single quotes. I'm going to put a list. I'm going to put double quotes inside the list because I like double quotes. And we're going to say c call and pointer stringify. And we're going to run that. OK. So now if you double check, we still have all the stuff we had before, but this time it's updated. So we're going to go ahead and redo the browser stuff here. So everything's the same, except now we have access to this message function. OK, so first we're going to use the module object and we're going to use C call. So this allows us to essentially call whatever C function we want arbitrarily from our WebAssembly module. And I think that we called it message. Yeah, OK. So it returns to this number, which at first that's not what it looks like, but you got to remember it's just a string. It's just a character pointer in C. So this actually just returned us the index of where that data exists inside the Wasm stack. So that's good, but we want to be able to get a string from this pointer. We want to stringify the pointer. So that's the other, that right there is the other function that we decided to also export from our module is module dot pointer stringify. And I think I'll just type this value here. OK, cool. And so we get high, which was actually the string that we decided to return from this function here. That's basically how you do C in WebAssembly in the browser. OK, that's all I have for what is WebAssembly. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, click notification bell. Uh, I think you know the drill by this point. If you don't, you're probably new here, so I'm welcome to have you. And 
you know, subscribe if you want more content like this, or if you want to check out some of the other pretty cool projects that I've worked on in the past. I'm definitely gonna have a few projects where I do like crazy stuff in WebAssembly, like maybe, you know, a full stack OCaml web app where I have OCaml in like the front end and the back end. And I do want to implement a language like BrainFuck in WebAssembly just for kicks and giggles. Speaking of which, the next video I'm going to do will probably be writing my own BrainFuck interpreter. It was fun, it took like 30 minutes, and I think I'm ready to share it with YouTube now. Apart from that, I don't have too much else to say, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.